Hey everyone, and welcome to today's Heart to Home devotional. Um, as always, it's a blessing to be here with you as we open up God's living and active word. So today I would like to start by reading out of the, the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 27, verses 45 through 50. It says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at, at once ran and took a sponge. He filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. So this is an absolute, absolutely amazing moment in time. There is God the Son hanging on the cross with the wrath of mankind's sin being poured out upon him by the Father. And Jesus cries out in a loud voice. And when he did so, at least some in the crowd should have recognized what he said was the beginning of Psalm 22, which is a psalm that describes the suffering of the Messiah. So this is a catastrophic moment in the spiritual realm. In the physical realm, it appears to simply to be the defeat of Jesus Christ, the supposed Jewish Messiah. And what I found interesting this time as I read through this passage was the reaction of those around the cross. The reactions are a representation in small of much of mankind in large. We can identify probably two types of people here that uh, come to the same conclusion, the same as we see uh, today. First, there were those that heard Jesus speak, but they did not hear him correctly. They said, this man is calling for Elijah, and Elijah is a respected prophet of God. So those who misunderstood had some knowledge of the things of God, and they began to make their conclusion possibly on intentionally limited understanding. One foot in, one foot out type of people. Second, the atmosphere around the cross was one of mocking, and so there were people mocking there. The scene before them was that of seeing others in control, others calling the shots, and putting the Messiah to death. They knew in their minds that this supposed Messiah was going to lose this battle, and the conclusion for both types of people was the same. Let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. So we'll sit and watch and see what happens. And here is the attitude of so many people today. If God proves himself to us, then we will believe him. And this was the attitude at the very moment that God's judgment was being poured out. The very moment that the extent of God's love for mankind was being demonstrated. And yet, Elijah did not come and save Jesus. The moment came and went, and the people went home, probably many unchanged, or maybe even more resolved in their unbelief. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And that faith is required beforehand. The truth can be missed even when it's right in front of us. And as it ha happens so often in our Christian lives, it can appear that the foundation of the Christian faith is be being defeated. But keep this in mind, the resurrection is right around the corner. Stand firm in your faith, therefore. 
Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, I pray um, that when we are around people that have this type of attitude, this wait and see, let God prove himself to us attitude, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would understand how to speak to uh, those people and to convince them, Lord, that, that faith is required and they need to step out. And we're just thankful, Lord, for the work that you did do on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, God bless you guys, and we'll see you the next time. Thank you.